Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. You guys have been asking me how do I cook in my kitchen and I'm going to show you how I cook in my tiny kitchen in my class B Heimer active van and let's get started. So we are going to use the instant pot which I keep under my bed. So one of the things that I love to do in my kitchen is to cook really simple meals. Um, it's a very simple place. Uh, I live very minimalistic and so I also have a very small refrigerator which means I can't store a lot of food in here and a lot of different appliances and everything. So I like to use my instant pot for a lot of different things. I can cook just one pot meals inside here by itself or you might have seen these in one of my other videos but I like to use these pot in pots. So with this, you can put in different food items and cook at the very same time, which makes it very efficient, less drain on your battery. So you're cooking everything at once. And that's important in your Heimer Active van or any particular RV or van that you're using when you have solar power. So today we're going to cook some salmon, some rice and some vegetables inside of here. And I know what you're thinking. I've said I'm vegan, but if you go back and look at my videos, I've also said I'm vegan plus fish. So I haven't gotten there yet where I don't eat fish at all. So any purist out there who is thinking she's not really vegan or she's pescatarian, that's not true either. I don't drink any milk or eat any dairy products or eggs or anything like that. So um, call it what you want. I call it vegan plus fish. So there you have it. So one of the things that you have to do in a smaller van or kitchen space is you have to shuffle things around sometimes in order to use the entire space in order to get your meal prepped. So I'm just going to move our pot and pots over there and I'm going to move the instant pot onto my bed so it's out of the way. And then we need to get all of the vegetables and fish. So that is down here in this refrigerator mushrooms and the brussels sprout fish is in here it's better than bouillon it's vegetable based we need ginger and garlic red pepper which i have stored up here this is all of our ingredients for our dish it's really not difficult whatsoever it's just really a matter of chopping it all up and putting it in its place oh you know what i forgot the rice let me get that so we have the rice and all of the other ingredients and we're going to mix it all up and put it inside of the pot and pot. I also need a bowl that I use to mix everything up and I know it probably looks a little junky right here but I have all my stuff organized, truly it is. So I use this white bowl a lot to mix things and to also eat out of. So it has multiple uses which I love. So this is the bowl that we're going to use to mix everything up and we also use i just have a small cutting board that i use it's not very big i have a larger one but it's pretty easy to just keep out on the countertop and use most of the time all right so we need to get our utensils to use for our cutting so we're going to use a knife and we need this spoon to mix a fork kitchen drawer is a little bit full I probably could downsize a little bit more, but I kind of use most everything in there. So we're going to chop everything up and put it inside this bowl and get it all mixed up. So first we're going to cut up all of our mushrooms and I have three here. I love mushrooms. All right, so I'm going to add these mushrooms into the bowl, one of the bowls. So we just have it inside here. Got this gigantic bag. I just recently bought an air fryer and uh, I will show you guys that here soon, but I love that thing. It's like a mini oven. As you know, inside here, I don't have an oven, so it will be, it's really nice to use for that. So I'm only gonna do, let's see, I'll, I'll just do four Brussels sprouts. So I'll just slice up these Brussels sprouts in half and I'll also put them inside this container. My Brussels sprouts are a little frozen. I think that, uh, and they were too close to the top of the freezer, but they'll be fine. They'll cook in here really well. All right, so those are cut. All right, so the next thing is the grape tomatoes. And I love how these just steam up inside of the Instant Pot. They get kind of smushy in there and I like it. It kind of bursts inside the Instant Pot inside the pan and kind of coats some of the vegetables with it. Just gives it a really nice flavor. 
and it's a great color inside there so you've got some red with your greens and it's beautiful we're just going to cut up our tomatoes now i just half them and throw them right in it's pretty easy so the next thing is the garlic all right so we have our two cloves of garlic so we have this nice little chop here so the next item is red onion i like to put a little bit of red onion in there not too much um, if I was sauteing this, I probably would put a little bit more, but because we're not, and we're just going to cook it inside the pot and pot, I just want to put a little bit for some flavor. So just, it's not a lot. No, it's not too bad. Like that? Yeah. That's what we're going to do today. So give this a quick chop. Just a nice little rough chop. You don't have to be like precise with it. That's the thing about cooking. I don't really even measure stuff a lot anymore unless I'm baking or something, but I don't bake in here. So I just kind of like throw in what I want and um, I hope you guys do that too. It's kind of more fun that way. It doesn't always turn out the same exact way, but that's okay. It's all good. All right, so the next thing we're going to put in here is the rice. Now I'm using jasmine rice. I use a little measuring cup that I got with my Instant Pot. I don't like to eat a ton of rice. I have the vegetables in there. So I'll probably do like eh, a half of a fourth of a cup. It doesn't have, it's like, it's just like, it's not even a line. I just do, I just look here on the measuring cup. So it's not even a fourth of a cup. And I know people are going to complain that I don't wash my rice. I've never died from it. So at least not yet. So I'm not going to wash it. I have to use a colander and extra water and everything for it. So if anybody has a good reason why I should be washing my rice, let me know. So we're just gonna throw that inside here now. We need water in this as well. I usually do about one and a half times the amount of rice that I use. I told you I'm not really precise with this stuff. I just kind of guess at it. All right, so that's about it. Slide that in there. Next, I like to use this better than bouillon vegetable base. Um, it gives it a lot of flavor. So I just mix in a little bit of that inside the rice. So when I say a little, like it's kind of, it can be really salty if you're not careful. So I just do a little bit like that. So I just mix it up here and make sure that it's all dissolved within the rice and the water. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mix all of our vegetables up inside of this white bowl and get them all mixed up really well and coated with a few spices and a little bit of sesame oil. Not a lot, just a little bit. So I'm just gonna dump it all inside here. So we're just gonna drizzle a little bit of sesame oil on top just to give it a nice flavor. That's really about it at that point, it's not a lot. I don't like to use a lot of oil just because I am trying to lose weight. I know many of you have commented about my weight loss. Thank you for that, for noticing. Um, I have been trying to eat much healthier and even though I'm vegan, you can eat kind of crappy being a vegan. Like Taco Bell has, you know, bean burritos. So. <laughs> It's considered vegan, but it's processed food. So I've been trying to eat more whole food, not processed food, and that's vegan except for the fish, of course. And that's really helped me to lose weight. So now we're gonna do the red pepper. I just do a little bit for some heat, just a tiny bit. All right, so the next thing is the ginger and I buy mine already smashed up or what do you want to call it minced I guess in this little jar so it just says squeezable ginger I know I probably should just do it myself but I don't so I'm just going to put a little bit of that in here just a tiny bit and it gives it a little flavor and also some lime juice just a little bit of the lime juice the last thing I do is a little bit of salt and pepper. Even though I put the red pepper in there, I do like to add just a little bit of cracked pepper. I also use some salt, some sea salt that I get down here. Oh, don't look in that drawer right now. It's kind of bad. <laughs> I have so many legumes and beans and things from when I was in my other RV that I just haven't eaten up and I didn't want to throw them away. So I just shoved them all in there and it's such a heavy drawer, but hopefully I'll eat them soon. Okay, so I put just a little bit of salt on this. Not a lot because the better than bouillon vegetable base that I put in here is a little salty and you're gonna mix your rice with your vegetables later on and it's gonna provide salt. So I just do a tiny, tiny bit. 
So the next thing is we just want to mix it all up so it's nice and coated and seasonings are all over all the vegetables. So I've mixed all the vegetables up and I have two pots and I need to cook rice, salmon, and all of the vegetables. So the salmon is going to cook pretty quickly so I'm going to put it in the top chamber and the rice will be in the bottom chamber because it's a little hardier, needs a little bit more time in the water bath below to cook. And the Brussels sprouts are also pretty hearty. So I'm going to put the Brussels sprouts in with the rice mixture just on top. So it cooks a little bit quicker on the bottom chamber. And then I'll put the salmon up on the top chamber with the vegetables. So it may sound a little weird, but watch and you'll see how it works. All right, so I gotta take all the Brussels sprouts out now and put them inside here. And you can leave some of the little leaves in here. It's fine, just the big Brussels sprouts. Just take all of those out and put inside here. So now all the Brussels sprouts are inside of the rice chamber and we're gonna put the vegetables inside the second chamber. You're gonna see how this works. It's gonna be beautiful. And this is great for especially, you know, solo travelers who are single and eating this way. You could easily cook this in a larger Instant Pot if you want, if there's a couple um, or even a family. You just need a bigger Instant Pot and bigger pot and pots and they sell those. So. Um, you should be able to find any of those on Amazon and I will provide a link inside of my description box and the pinned comment so you can find those pretty easily. We're just going to slide our salmon, our frozen salmon, just on top of the vegetables. Next I'm going to put a little bit of lime juice on top of the salmon and it's frozen so it's not going to really sink in that well but at least it'll be on the top when it steams. And I put some ginger on top as well, just to give it a little bit more flavor as it starts to cook. All right, so now we have our two dishes. They're ready to go. We just need to put the lids on them and stick them in the Instant Pot and they'll be cooking away. I just like to put all of my stuff away really quickly too before I start cooking, just because it makes it so much easier um, to get the Instant Pot up on top of the countertop and make sure that everything is just to make, I like everything to be really tidy. Let's just say that. I like it to be tidy before I actually like put everything inside the pot. It clears off the countertop. And remember I told you it's a lot about shuffling, right? So we're about to shuffle. Pepper goes in here. And it's easy because everything is just really right at your fingertips. So sesame oil goes down here. Knives and forks. We're gonna slide inside of the sink. I have the three quart instant pot. I used to have a six quart, but it was way too big for just one person. So I downsized uh, when I got into this van and got the three quart. This particular lid does not have the steamer holes in it. So I'm going to get my lid that has the steamer holes on it. So we can put that on the top chamber and I'll show you how that works. Take this off the bed. This is the contraption that it actually fits into so that it all stays nice and tight inside of here. We want the rice with the Brussels sprouts on the bottom. That needs to cook a little bit faster. And so if it's in the water bath in the very bottom, it's gonna get the heat from the bottom of the Instant Pot. And it's also going to get that steam bath around it. So it's going to cook a little bit faster than the top pot. The next thing we're gonna do is put the top chamber on here. Now this acts as the lid to the bottom chamber. So we'll put this lid on here that has the steamer holes in it and that will be on the very top chamber. It's a little full, so we're gonna push it down just a little bit. It's the salmon that's on top. It's okay, it's not gonna hurt anything. We will put this inside of the little, I don't know what you call this. I call it a contraption. It's a little device that keeps everything together, if that makes sense. All right, let's put this in our Instant Pot and get this thing cooking. All right, oh, we need water inside here first. So it, you need about a cup of water as your water bath in the bottom if you're gonna use the pot and pot method. And now we're just going to put in our pot and pot. So that's it as far as putting it all inside the Instant Pot and you will just slide the lid on. You need to make sure it's sealing because it is pressure cooking. It is a pressure cooker. We need it to be sealed. So make sure that says sealed and that it's completely locked. It'll give you a little noise. I don't know if you heard that. I'll show you again. So that's open. There's closed. It lets you know that it's 
closed and you can feel it, you know, you're tugging on it, it's really closed and then it's in the sealed position. So you're good to go. I know a lot of people can be afraid of pressure cookers. Um, I've never had an issue and I was a little nervous in the beginning too, just because I hadn't dealt with one before. But once you get used to it, it's so easy. I think you're gonna really love it. And it's just easy to cook, especially in these small spaces and for one person. So I love it. So we're gonna put it on pressure cook for nine minutes. And if you're not familiar with the Instant Pots, so what happens is you set it for nine minutes and it's not gonna take nine minutes to cook. So it has to actually get up to pressure. So what will happen is this will say on. Once you turn, once I turn this on, it'll say on. And then once it gets up to pressure, then it will put nine minutes on the clock and then it will start to pressure cook all the way down to zero minutes. And then it'll just keep it warm for you until you're ready. So it says off right now, we're gonna hit pressure cook. It says 10 minutes on the clock is what it just comes up with automatically, but we want nine. So we're just gonna hit the minus sign to nine. And then you'll see in just a minute, it's going to kick on and just say on, there it goes. So it's going to now start getting up to pressure, which is a good thing. And you might hear some noises coming out of this, even a little bit of steam as it starts to get up to pressure. But once it gets up to pressure, there's this little button over here that will pop as it gets to pressure. It'll pop up and that means that it's at pressure and you should see the clock show nine minutes on there. So that's it right now until it's done cooking. I'll come back to you when it's done. Just one more minute and we're done. It's keeping it warm and it says zero, zero, zero because it's now going to count the timer up for how many minutes it's been on warm. So we're going to keep it here and let it natural release until it's all released for about 10 minutes. It's all done. We're ready to go. We're going to open up the lid. I just double check, even though I've done a natural release, you want to make sure all the steam is out. So I put a little towel on top of it to vent it. So you just flip it over. You just want to make sure that all of the steam has been released and that button in the back is definitely down and it is so we can take the lid off. It is hot too, so I'm going to take this out with the towel. And you just wanna be careful when you open this that steam is going to come out, so just be careful. It just takes a second to get it off. This is where it gets really hot, Woo, right there. Now we'll just take this off and let's look at the rice and see how it's done with the Brussels sprouts. That looks good too, it's all done. Guys, we are done. We've got a beautiful lunch that's healthy. Our salmon, rice, Brussels sprouts, tomatoes, and mushrooms, all in one pot in the Instant Pot. Super easy to do, and it tastes great. So let's try it out. I usually think my stuff is pretty good. We'll see. Mmm. That's good. Lots of flavor. And the salmon? We'll get a little tomato on there too. Mm. I think this is a winner. All right guys, that is it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you want to see more cooking, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. You should see that button right now on your window. And another video that you might like where I did three meals in one day using one pot. So check that out and let me know how you like it too. All right guys, have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.